Stop mucking around. I need you over at Thresher Assembly. Yes, sir. Mama, I brought you back, sir. You're killing yourself at the factory and the school you go to. For why? Because it gives my life meaning. Ah, uh, meaning. What is this? I know you don't understand. Come home. I love you, mother. But after struggling for months, I have finally made a breakthrough. In this breakthrough, will it feed your wife and children someday? My latest composition is the finest piece I have I ever. I don't want to hear of your foolish dreams. Build a home, get married, bring me the grandchildren. That's all I ask. Is that all? Are you mocking your mother? Never. See you at church on Sunday, Mama. Mm. Oh, good boy, Gustav. Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen. Listening at the door. <laughs> She's like this all day. Relentlessly active. Throwing tantrums. Gets into everything. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry, George. Obviously, we'll be replacing that, George. Good morning, all. Inspector, is that a cello? Indeed. This voluptuous beauty is a brand new R.S. Williams cello, and I intend to master it. Here, sir, in the station house. <sighs> Margaret's suffering with headaches. Uh, 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 Susanna? <laughs> Susanna sure has a lot of energy. She does. Perhaps learning an instrument might focus her creativity in a more productive manner. Isn't she a bit young? Oh, sir, nonsense. Two words, Dr. Crutch. Little Billy Crutch, the piano prodigy. He was performing at the age of two. If he can do it, no reason Susanna can't. Well, uh, our nanny does play piano. Perhaps we could pay her to, to teach her. What do you think? Well, music is math-based. I suppose it's worth a try. Well, then it's decided. Oh, Susanna. Murdoch, Crabtree. Trouble over at Lippincott Street. Here's the address. What's happened? A ghastly crime. To be murdered so young and on the cusp of greatness. The cusp of greatness, sir? Gustav is one of my former students. What is it that you teach, Mr...? Pifkin, Gerald Pifkin. I teach music theory. I came to pay Gustav a visit this morning, and the door was open, and I saw his body just lying there. He was just lying there thinking, I didn't know what to do. Mr. Pifkin, if you would, uh... We'd like you to come down to the station house and answer some more questions. 
Gustav had no enemies to speak of. Rivals, however, he had in abundance. What kind of rivals? Gustav was writing a piece of music for the Robert Ambrose New Composer's Prize. Is there a monetary award associated to this prize? Not monetary, but something priceless. A performance of the winning composition by the Toronto Symphony Orchestra. And was Mr. Bull in the running to win the prize? In the top five, in my estimation. Who are the other four? His closest chums, oddly enough. Oh. I'll be needing their names. Well, the most gifted of the bunch would have to be Pascal Girard, a violin prodigy turned composer. <laughs> He's the front runner in this competition. And then there's Miss Sylvia Fashada. She's surprisingly talented for a woman. And then there's another fellow, not one of my students, Winston Glover. I find him a bit aloof, an outlier. I don't believe he belongs amongst such an elite group of musicians. And then lastly, there's Daniel Spratt. Bit of a wild card, Danny. He comes from the wrong side of the tracks, so to speak. But then again, music can rise from the depths of adversity. Oh my lord, what is that abominable noise? Our inspector has taken up the cello. Are we done here? I can call you. Oi, Murdoch, come to my office. See if you can guess what tune I'm playing. Come on. So what do you think? I think you are definitely holding a bow and moving it to and fro across some strings. But what about the song? I'm not familiar with popular music. However, I do believe that a talent such as yours deserves to be properly nurtured by a music teacher. That might speed up the learning process. Especially if that teacher has a music studio somewhere outside of the station house where police work won't distract you from anything. Excuse me, detective? Inspector? Ah, what have you, Miss Hart? Uh, Mr. Gustav Bull's postmortem. The ice pick penetrated his brain and killed him instantly. Shocker. Is there something else, Miss Hart? Just, I was acquainted with the victim. He and his friends frequented the Starbright Club. Oh, I'm sorry for your loss. Thank you. I wanted to let you know that the Starbright will be hosting a wake for Mr. Bull tonight. You can pay your respects to the dead. And interrogate the living. Perhaps you should wait until after the musical tribute. Of course. And perhaps you could gather and label empty glasses so I can collect finger marks? You have my complete cooperation. The fact it was I who found his lifeless body sprawled out on the floor, an ice pick jutting from his ear. An ice pick? Could it have been a robbery? Nah, it couldn't have been a robbery. Gus never had two nickels to rub together. Professional rivalry, then? A romantic one. My face to torment is scolding my son. Oh, don't torment yourself. Gustav knew you loved him. <laughs> Mr. Pifkin said something that struck me as odd. Called Mr. Glover an outlier. Said he didn't belong within this group of elite musicians. Hmm. That man thinks Winston doesn't belong. I wonder why that might be. You suspect prejudice clouds Mr. Pifkin's judgment? Nail on the head, detective. Winston and Gustav were good friends. They got along quite fine. All five of them, for the most part. Have you witnessed conflict within the group? Pascal and Gustav had words a few nights ago. Is that right? What was the argument about? I don't know. I told them to pipe down or to get out. And that settled them down quite quickly. That was quite quick. Surprise! Isn't it splendid? It certainly is large. Susanna was asleep when it was delivered. I can't wait to watch her eyes light up when she sees him in the morning. C, D, E, F, A, G, B. E. 
head back to C. And I'm afraid that's the extent of your father's musical knowledge. And then I can add that the black keys are sharps and flats, and that's the extent of your mother's. <laughs> I think she's really taken to it. At it bright and early, I see, George. Sir, I took finger marks from the glasses at the Starbury Club and compared them to all those we found at Gustav Bowles' apartment. Any matches? They all match. Not surprising. Mr. Bowles' associates admitted to visiting his apartment on several occasions. So, sir, what's our next step? Miss Hart told me that Mr. Bowl had an argument with Pascal Girard a few days before the murder. Let's start by confirming his alibi. What is his alibi? Not what. Who? Pascal Girard claims he was with you on the night of Gustave Bull's murder. When was that? Monday night. No, we weren't with Pascal on Monday night. You weren't? No. Wrong night. We were with him the night before. Sunday night. We wish we were with him Monday night. And Tuesday night. Wednesday night. Every night, really. Pascal is such an attractive man, don't you find, Detective? I... Uh, Dapper, too. That's not relevant. And virile. Also not relevant. <laughs> to you, maybe. What is relevant to me is that the two of you were not with Mr. Girard on Monday night. Correct? Correct. Mr. Girard? Ah, Detective Murdoch. How delighted. You must be to see me. <laughs> oh, have some brandy, man. It's 9 a.m. Oh, wine then? I'm here to ask you some questions about Gustav Bull. Oh, must you be so dreary? I nearly drunk my friend's death from my mind. You, you have left me no choice but to invest in another bottle. Barkeep! A witness has informed me that you and Mr. Bull had a rather intense dispute right before he died. A regrettable spat. But I prefer to not wallow in regret. Instead, I will wallow in the nice snifter of Chateau Tunin Tanan Tununda. Sir, I paid for that. This is serious. Agreed. You die from dehydration. You give that here. Are his gloves off now? What are you doing? Are you challenging me to a duel? Yes. Would you like one? Oh, God. Oh. That's it. Locking you in our cells until you dry up. Uh, uh, sir, you'll question Mr. Drawer tomorrow then? Uh, yes, he should be sober enough for questioning come morning. Uh, excuse me, could you please tell me where to find Inspector Thomas Brackenreed? And you are? Uh, Paul Hall. <laughs> I teach too. Well, thank God. He's come to save us. Mr. Hahn, uh, the inspector is in dire need of your help. Once you get past the gruff exterior, he's really quite teachable. Oh. Hey, God. Hey, God. Shut your yap, Callahan. Hey, God. Hey, God. Shut your yap, Callahan. Hey, God! Hey, God! Shut your yap, Callahan!
Sister Gerard. Mr. Pascal Gerard. Ah, uh, detective. <clears throat> Morning. I want to apologize for yesterday. You lied about your alibi. The two young women stated that you were not with them on the night that Gustav Boll was murdered. Oh. Yes, that's right. In truth, I was in a place very much like this. You were locked up in a drunk tank. No, shameful, I know. Why on earth would you suspect me of harming Gustav? Because he was your rival. The two of you were overheard arguing at the Starbright Club. Oh, that? Gustav was yammering on about Schoenberg, claiming that his atonal monstrosities were the future of symphonic innovation, and one cannot simply allow such ridiculous assertions to go unchallenged, can one? Be that as it may, you will remain behind bars, Mr. Gerard, until I can confirm your latest alibi. I hope you find who did this. I truly do. If you would like to help me, then perhaps you can tell me if you suspect one of your friends. I mean, there was a moment when I thought that Winston Glover might, um... Why, Mr. Glover? I'm loath to betray a friend. But it's because of the murder weapon. Glover. That's me. Detective William Murdoch. We met at Gustav's Wake. I remember. Did you find the killer? Not yet. But I was wondering about your relationship with Gustav Ball. He did his thing and I did mine. Completely different styles. But you were competing against each other for the Ambrose Prize. <laughs> I have no chance of winning. I just enter for the publicity. You don't believe you have the talent? I have the talent. But it doesn't matter if every single other contestant dropped out. Those shirts would never let someone like me win. And that injustice must make you very, very angry. It does. But you grow immune to the anger after stifling your entire life. Do you? Or does it explode? What are you trying to say? This ice pick, Mr. Glover, is exactly like the one that was used to kill Gustav Ball. Yeah, because I gave it to him. He had a window that kept icing shut. Unfortunately, your connection to the murder weapon makes you a suspect, and I will need you to come down to the station house for further questioning. So there are two young musicians already in the cells? Yes, and not enough conclusive evidence to charge either of them. Oh, for God's sake, man, relax. You're not sawing timber. Ah! Pick him up. Please don't go. The man is unteachable. Mr. Hahn, please don't go. I, I think I've got it. Maybe I'll quit teaching cello. Open a piano store. Can someone help me? Oh, Mrs. Bull, <laughs> Detective Murdoch. We met at your son's funeral. I am sorry to trouble you. I don't know where else to turn. What can we do for you? I have so many regrets. I never bothered to listen to my son's music. I never gave a second thought to this thing that he loved so dearly. But today, I realized it's not too late. Gustav is gone. What? His music isn't. Well, yes, that's right. Uh, art outlives its creator. That's part of the reason we make it. That's very good, George. Uh, Constable Crabtree is a novelist. Oh, how wonderful. I want to hear my son's composition. The one that he was so proud of. It must be in his apartment. But I, I can't bear to go back there. Is it possible that... Yes, yes, of course. Uh, 
George would be happy to go to your son's apartment and retrieve his sheet music. Are you into this? Yes, of course. It would be my honor. Window stuck. Who are you? Uh, Sylvia Fashada. I'm a friend of Gustav's. Why are you here? I'm looking for his composition for the Ambrose Prize. His mother wants it. Well, I haven't seen it here. Perhaps he already submitted it. Did you make a habit of breaking into your friend's homes? I just wanted to be amongst his things one last time. Call me sentimental. What are you hiding there? Oh, yeah. Give me that. Sentimental indeed. Miss Fashada, why don't you come down to the station house, have a chat with the detective? I beg you, dear Gustav, resist temptation. Reject this former paramour who seeks to tear us apart. Seems you had some competition for his affections. My private life is none of your business. Miss Fashada, you are a suspect in a murder investigation. Convince me that you are innocent and your private life will remain private. We were lovers. Why would I kill the man I loved? A far more likely killer would be his former sweetheart who refuses to accept that Gustav moved on. Who's this former sweetheart? Seven, come eleven. Oh, baby needs a new pair of shoes. Little Joe from Kokomo, point set at four. Yeah. Little Joe from Kokomo, point set at four. Little Joe from Kokomo, point set at four. Little Joe from Kokomo, point set at four. for disrupting the party. Daniel Spratt? Wants to know. Detective William Murdoch, Toronto Constabulary. <sighs> Give me a break. Just a starving artist trying to make a few extra dollars. Perhaps winning the Ambrose Prize would change that fortune? Is that why you murdered Gustav Bull? Why would I kill the guy in the running for third place? Because that third place contender also left you for a woman. <laughs> Figures. Snake eyes. Stop! Stop! <laughs> Mr. Brad! You realize that running makes you look very guilty. Let's go. Pascal Girard fought with Gustave Bowe shortly before he was murdered. But the murder weapon is linked to Winston Glover. Meanwhile, Sylvia Fashada was found snooping around Gustave's apartment. And Daniel Spratt is Mr. Bowe's spurned lover. So who's our main suspect? I don't know. Well... I'm off to the cells to check out these musical geniuses for myself. With your cello, sir? No, no, no. Thank heaven for small mercies, George. Right. You told the police that the murder weapon was mine? I said it might be yours. I didn't say you killed him with you it. You might as well have. You broke into Gustav's apartment? I did not break in. He gave me a key. But that's not all he gave you. Oh, you're a nasty casual and want to be Pascal. You're just jealous. Of what? You can sip it, Los Anatos? You're a strumpet, Sylvia. Better a strumpet than a cuckold. How dare you? If I wasn't daring, none of you men would take me seriously. What did that poor cello ever do to you? I don't want any musical advice. Maybe a little, if you've got any tips. Give it up, man. The world will thank you. Be nice. You were all dreadful when we first started. Speak for yourselves. Oi, shut up! 
One of you lot killed Mr. Bull. Now, am I going to get a confession, or do you need me to keep playing? Thank you for the confirmation, Constable. You as well. Detective Murdoch? Mr. Pifkin, what can I do for you? I demand to know why you've caged up all my former students like they were criminals. Well, you didn't seem to care about their welfare when you were disclosing their relationship with the deceased to me. I didn't know you'd arrest them all. This will decimate the field of entrance for the Ambrose Prize. I understand. I don't care. This is terrible. Simply terrible. Aren't you a music instructor? Yes, but I'm not taking on any new students. I'm far too busy. Ooh, charming. Well, I learned nothing from the four suspects. Three suspects, actually. I've just confirmed with Station House Number One that Pascal Girard was in their custody when Mr. Bull was murdered. Sirs, I've just been to the office of the Ambrose Prize. Did you obtain Gustave Bull's composition? He had registered, but not yet submitted his composition. I did find one thing peculiar, though. What's that, George? A late submission, sir. Gerald Pifkin. Pifkin has entered the Ambrose competition? The man's delusional. The pomp is git. It's a terrible, terrible fashion sense. You don't believe he has talent? Are you by chance familiar with the work of George Bernard Shaw? Those who can do, those who can't teach. Spot on, Detective. Pifkin hasn't composed in decades. Maybe he found inspiration in our misfortune. Or he found it in Gustav Ball's apartment. Detective Murdoch, William Harwell, attorney. I represent Pascal Girard, and I demand that you release my client. Very well. Well, that was easy. Station House One has confirmed your client's alibi. Well, I demand that you release my associates as well. My attorney, Mr. Harwell, will be taking them on as clients. I will. Send the bill to Mother. Thank you, Pascal. Take back everything I said about you. Drinks on me tonight, buddy. I don't want to win the Ambrose just because my competitors are in jail, now do I? I demand that you release... No need to demand. I was already releasing them. I'm pursuing a different line of investigation. Hey, buglugs! That sounds bloody awful. Well, yes, doesn't it, sir? Mm. You can keep the cello. I won't be needing it. I've got no talent. Sir, you'll never know if you have the talent if you never take the time to master the skill. Oh, look, this might sound daft, but I just wanted to create something beautiful. Even if no one else hears it. Even if it just vanishes into the air and is gone. Then keep trying. I look forward to your rendition of Eyes the Bar. On the cello. How's your morning been? Well, let's just say that Susanna's really taken to the piano. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> Why don't you show Papa what you've learned? No, no. No, not today. After speaking with our group of composers, I decided to look into Pifkin's past and I spoke with an administrator at his previous place of employment. He mentioned an incident where professional jealousy drove him to attack a student. He was let go. Pifkin could have killed Gustav Boll and stolen his composition. He's also the one who reported finding the body. How convenient. Bring him in, Murdoch. Pifkin saw our arrest was his chance to sweep the Ambrose. That hack actually thinks he can win? Oh, I for one relish the chance to punish him. Here. This is his studio. There it is. Tone deaf maestro murdering the piano. Wait a minute. That's actually magnificent. I certainly didn't expect that. Sylvia? Oh, dear heart, don't cry. What's wrong? That's Gustav's composition. 
Piskin must have killed him for it. Oh, happy day. You've all been released from jail. You are the one who should be in jail. You're a phony and a murderer. You stole Gustav's music. You murdered him. Sylvia, don't. <laughs> Fashada, that's enough. He stole Gustav's music. Gerald Pifkin, you are under arrest for the murder of Gustav Ball. Murder? Preposterous. Save it for your trial, Mr. Pifkin. I'll see that the Ambrose jury receives Mr. Ball's composition right this way. <laughs>I admit, this time, the composer's identity surprised me. Uh, William Murdoch, sir. Why is that? Detective Murdoch caught Gustav's killer. Well, Detective, Ball's compositions consistently demonstrated discipline. But not excellence. But this one was a masterpiece of sublime and nimble eloquence. A welcome diversion from Gustav's dreary signature tonality. Very much of the Impressionist school. The music influenced the pinch of Rubel. I'm sorry your friend couldn't be here to see his work performed. Maestro, may I have your autograph? Of course. Who should I make it out to? Nathaniel Dett. Sounds familiar. Uh, Mr. Dett, it's an honor to meet you, sir. Winston Glover. You know my work? Yes, of course. I do some composing myself. Interesting. I'm thinking about forming a choral society. Is that something that would interest you? Yeah, it would. Well, uh, I should head home. Good night, all. Drat, I must have left my walking stick. Care to venture back into the concert hall with me, Detective? There's something I'd like to discuss. Lead the way. What is it you wish to discuss with me, Mr. Girard? Music. What else is there? You heard what the conductor said about the composer's identity? I did. But I can't say I followed his explanation. Gustav was an acolyte of Schoenberg, an Austrian composer who emphasizes atonality. Explain atonality. Functional melodies are discarded. Melodic rhythmic elements are emphasized. But Ms. Fashada stated that 
that Mr. Bowles winning composition was a departure from his signature atonality. She's correct. It's of the Impressionist school. Which is characterized by... Like Impressionist painters and artists who explored texture and colors. Impressionism in music explores timbre, musical colors and ambiguous tonality. Almost like the blurred lines of Monet. focus on mood and atmosphere, the embrace of progressive harmonies, the rejection of traditional structures. There is a group of notes that keeps repeating in Mr. Bull's composition. You noticed. It's peculiar that Gustav would write such a tonal piece with a recurring melody that is unapologetically diatonic. What if we were to advance each in the sequence? Or movement. Note up the scale, we call that transposing. Which gives us? F, F A, A C, C, A, B, B. Facade. I know who killed Gustav Bohr. Miss Fashada, there you are. Detective Murdoch. Did you enjoy the concert this evening? It was magnificent. I can't help but wonder if it was difficult for you to be romantically involved with someone whose talent is clearly superior to yours. I beg your pardon? The audience was spellbound. People wept. Gustav Bull was a genius. I find it difficult to believe that you could ever reach that level. <laughs> You're right. The composition was brilliant. If Gustav was here, I'd tell him so to his face. It was brilliant because he didn't write it. You did. What do you want about? Fashada. That is a Portuguese name, is it not? In English, it translates to facade. And you transpose the letters in your family name, F-A-C-A-D-E, to obtain the notes that you repeated throughout your composition. No, Gustav wrote it. I wonder if that argument will hold up when I analyze the writing on the sheet music and compare it to your handwriting. Time to drop the facade, Miss Fashada. You wrote a brilliant piece of music, and it's time to be recognized for all that you've done. It is a brilliant piece of music, and it's mine. I won the Ambrose Prize, not Gustav. Thought he loved me. He used me. He told me no one would believe a woman wrote the piece, and he was planning to enter it under his own name, and I grabbed that ice pick and... And now you'll likely hang for it. I'll be famous. Sylvia Fashada. Killer composer. My music will be celebrated by critics and performed by orchestras the world over. I suppose I'm living the dream. Sylvia Fashada, you are under arrest for the murder of Gustav Bull.
sitting here all night? Well, all of this talk of talent and discipline has me wondering if I have what it takes. And so I've been practicing. Are you serious? I didn't hear anything. Oh, no. I, well, I didn't want to wake you or Susanna up, so I didn't actually depress any keys. I've just been rehearsing the finger movements while studying this piece of sheet music. A waltz by Chopin? William, that's a rather advanced piece.